Is he there? My today's topic is ectopic fat in heart and brain. Not many studies are there for the relevance of ectopic fat in brain. But nonetheless, we have a lot of information about the consequences of the ectopic fat in the heart. Let's start. What is the ectopic fat? You know, deposition of fat in areas of the body where fat is not physiologically stored, like ectopic fat can happen in the brain, can happen in the heart, can happen in the pancreas, can happen in the liver, kidney, and the skeletal muscle. So today I'm going to focus only on two important organs of the body that is the brain and the heart. Let's start with the ectopic fat in the heart. The different kinds of the ectopic fat in the heart includes the epicardial fat, and the epicardial fat is defined as the visceral fat that deposits within the heart. It develops from the brown adipose tissue and is located between the myocardium and the visceral layer of the pericardium commonly exist in the atrioventricular and the interventricular grooves. It shares the same microcirculation as the myocardium and they are having small adipocytes and they mix cellularity. Metabolically, they are very active and source of several adipokines. This is the electron microscopic imaging of the human epicardial fat. On the left hand side, you can see the microscopic appearance of the epicardial layer in the left ventricle, while on the right hand side, you can see the microscopic appearance of the epicardial layer in the right ventricle. The arrow, what I have shown here, shows the islet of the mature adipocyte. No facial structure divides the epicardial adipose tissue from the underlying myocardium. Now, what is the physiological function of the epicardial fat? Then we'll talk about the pathological function of the epicardial fat. Normally, the physiological function of the epicardial fat can be broadly discussed in three main formats, mechanical, metabolic, thermogenic. The mechanical, it has the compressibility and elasticity that can mechanically protect the coronary artery against the excessive distortion caused by the artery pulse and the myocardial contraction. Metabolic is the highly active free fatty acid metabolism supplies free fatty acid to the myocardium. Thermogenic increase expression of the uncoupling protein one and the related genes and the thermogenesis is similar to the brown adipose tissue. It protects the myocardium and coronaries from hypothermic damage. You know, the protective secreting factor produces cytokines involved in the regulation and arterial function, coagulation, and the inflammation. Adiponectin and adrenomedulin are the cardioprotective. Now, coming to the epicardial fat versus the other visceral fat deposits, it is a greater capacity for the release and uptake of the free fatty acids, lower rate of glucose utilization, the free fatty acid synthesis and the rates of incorporation and the breakdown are significantly higher in epicardial fat than any other fat depot. Lipoprotein lipase and acetyl coenzyme carboxylase activity are consistently lower and UCP1 expression is significantly higher. The ectopic fat in the heart also includes the epicardial fat epicardial adipose tissue, pericoronary adipose tissue, which is an extension of the epicardial fat, and the intramyocardial fat, which is the infiltration of the adipocytes from the, what you call the epicardial adipose tissue to the myocardium. Non-adipocytes and the cardiomyocytes have a very limited capacity to store excess fat. If they're exposed to high levels of plasma lipids, as typically occurs in the obesity, they can undergo steatosis and loss of function, ultimately resulting in cardiac lipotoxicity, what we call the cardiac steatosis. How do we measure the epicardial fat in the routine clinical practice? 
2D echo is the simple, best, and the what you call the cheapest method to measure the thickness of the epicardial fat in at least two locations on the right ventricular free wall. MRI fat generates a strong MRI signal. Both thickness and the volume of the epicardial fat can be measured by the MRI. Non contrast CT scan measures both thickness and the volume. It is a more sensitive and accurate modality, though it is a cumbersome longer radiation exposure as compared to the MRI and 2D echo. You know, if you correlate the epicardial fat with the obesity and the heart disease, you know, the epicardial adipose tissue may turn into an adverse lipotoxic, prothrombotic, and pro inflammatory organ, which causes a vicious cycle in between the obesity, heart disease and the involvement of the epicardial fat. Now coming to the, what is the link of the epicardial fat and the cardiometabolic risk? We can say the epicardial fat is a marker for the visceral adiposity, significantly and independently related to the metabolic syndrome, independently correlates with the various cardiac risk factors, associated with the presence and severity of CAD, and also changes in the left and right ventricle mass and diastolic function and associated with the atrial fibrillation. Epicardial fat also correlates with the visceral adipose tissue. If you can see in the cartoon, is the correlation of the abdominal visceral adipose tissue fat in the area of A and the epicardial adipose tissue EAT volume in the cartoon B with the body mass index and that between VAT and EAT volume in the cartoon C. So it has got a very good correlation with the visceral adipose tissue, epicardial adipose tissue and a good correlation with the body mass index. Apart from that, multiple commonly occurring cardiac risk factor also correlates with the epicardial fat content like diastolic blood pressure, hyperinsulinemia, LDL particles, adiponectin, hyperglycemia, systolic blood pressure, SDL cholesterol, triglyceride, CRP, leptin, and fibrinogen, and also the left ventricular mass. So we can say the epicardial fat is the source of inflammatory mediators and has got an important role in the atherosclerosis and the coronary artery disease. And that is why we have to see how best we can prevent the accumulation of the epicardial fat. You know, epicardial adipose tissue is increased in the presence of the obstructive coronary artery disease and is an independent predictor of the presence of plaques with a non calcified component. And this was the paper which basically showed the coronary artery calcium scoring and the epicardial adipose tissue volume measurement on 214 consecutive patients referred for the coronary angiography. The word I told you about the myocardial steatosis is an independent predictor of the diastolic dysfunction type 2 diabetes. And you can see in this cartoon, the myocardial hepatic triglyceride concentration among the healthy subjects and the patients, and the correlation between the myocardial triglyceride content and the left ventricular diastolic function. You know, the increased myocardial triglyceride content is significantly associated with the decreased myocardial function. What you call, we can see the E early diastolic filling phase and the E by A ratio of the maximal left ventricle early peak filling rate and the maximal left ventricle Atrial peak filling rate. I was talking about some of the physiological part of the epicardial fat, which is sometimes protective. And coming to the pathological, when there's abnormal accumulation of the epicardial fat, it is known to cause excess free, free fatty acid synthesis. It causes modulation of intramyocardial fat con content. It causes intriguing inflammatory state. It is a source of secretion of proatherogenic and pro inflammatory adipokines and has a correlation with the coronary artery disease and also correlation with the atrial fibrillation. 
can be attributed the functional relationship with the heart, causal and independent role in the CAD, causal and independent role in the AF, and abnormal regulation of the interesting cardiac nervous system. Now coming to the importance of the epicardial fat in the coronary artery disease, if you see the adiponectin is down-regulated, adenomedulin is down-regulated which both were protective, but when they become down-regulated they cause increase in the free fatty acid oxidation, leptin is upregulated, resistance is upregulated, TNF alpha, IL-1, IL-6, MCP-1, they are all upregulated. This is the pathophysiological role of epigardial fire in the coronary artery disease. We also talked about the atrial fibrillation or the arrhythmia. You know, the epicardial adipose tissue accumulation participate in creating an arrhythmogenic substrate. Because of the anatomical obstacle to the cardiac excitation, because of lipid overload, because of paracrine crosstalk with the myocardium. It is an increase in the activation delay, early and delayed, after depolarization, increase in the action potential duration, increase in the resting membrane potential, and increase in the fibrosis, which gives the ground for the arrhythmogenic substrate leading to the atrial fibrillation. Now, the whole cycle of the diabetes, obesity, and the, life, the epicardial fat expansion can also be linked with the heart path, the heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction. And you know, I have just given in red uh, letters what are the drugs which can be used along to treat diabetes, along with the lifestyle modification, and also for the epicardial fat reduction. They are the metformin, GLP-1 receptor agonists, SGLT2 inhibitors, and sometimes the statins and the PCSK9 inhibitors. Let's see one by one. Coming to the lifestyle and the pharmacological contamination, simply the strategies to reduce epicardial fat start from the lifestyle changes apart from the drug, what I told you. And it has been seen beautifully that changes in the adiposity markers after weight loss Overall, severely obese subject lost 20% of the original body weight and the BMI reduced by 19% of the original BMI. The waist circumference decreased by 23% of the initial waist circumference and the epicardial fat thickness decreased by 32% of baseline epicardial fat thickness simply by changes in the epicardial fat by the weight loss. Apart from the lifestyle exercise status have also been known to cause reduction in epicardial fat and it is very much visible that change of the epicardial fat thickness according to the statin A, atorvastatin, simvastatin, azetamide and it was seen the atorvastatin was associated with this most significant reduction of the epicardial fat thickness. The third drug, the metformin, has also been shown to significantly decreases epicardial adipose tissue in newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes. And in this paper, basically published a few years back, the statistically significant decrease in the epicardial adipose thickness after three months of metformin therapy was seen that we can say that metformin alone monotherapy can also help to reduce the epicardial fat. Now the third drug, the GLP-1 receptor agonist, which has been shown beautifully that weekly administration of the semaglutide and the dulaglutide causes a rapid, substantial and the dose-dependent reduction in the EAT, epicardial adipose tissue thickness. And there have been large randomized controlled trial where it has been shown the dulaglutide causes large and rapid epicardial fat reduction. Now coming to the HGLT2 inhibitors, we have seen in patients with type 2 diabetes and obesity in, who are given dapagliflozin, the epicardial adipose tissue decreased by 20% from baseline to 24 weeks. And also it shows a favorable result in the heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction, including the EAD reduction. 
Now the second part of my talk is the ectopic fat in the brain. Not much has been basically discussed about the ectopic fat in the brain. Not that much research is basically being focused on the role of the ectopic fat in the brain. But whatever we know about the importance of the ectopic fat in the brain, you know the insulin receptors exist throughout the brain. We all know. And insulin has an important role in various brain functions such as control of the body weight, food intake and the memory formation. And we know the brain insulin resistance occurs in obesity, type 2 diabetes because of the elevated free fatty acids and how the brain is involved, let's discuss how the brain is involved in causing brain insulin resistance. If you just see the brain insulin sensitivity, which is linked to the adiposity and the body fat distribution. Here, what they are trying to show the reason specific change in the cerebral blood flow in response to an intranasal insulin administration. It was extracted for the hypothalamus as a reason of interest. You can see the picture A, participant with a strong insulin induced suppression in the hypothalamic blood flow has significantly less visceral adipose tissue. In the cartoon B, subcutaneous fat content was not associated with the insulin sensitivity of the hypothalamus. In the cartoon C, the ratio of the visceral to the subcutaneous adipose tissue was favorably lower in those with the strong insulin induced hypothalamic blood flow. And lastly, the cartoon D, pink filled circles, if you are seeing, are the female participants, open blue circles are the male. Lines represent the fit lines. You know, the females, they differ from the males in related to the hypothermic insulin responsiveness according to the fat distribution. There have been many animal experiments that in response to the high fat feeding in the mice, there was increase in the lipid accumulation in the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, when it was excised from the mice and analyzed for the to total lipid content, it was saying the hypothalamus was loaded with the lipid content. Similarly, individual species of the hypothalamic bioactive lipid in response to the high fat, fat feeding, you can, you know, do the DAG uh, species and you can see the various quartiles of the hypothermic bioactive lipids in response to the high fat feeding in the experimental mice. Now, recently there has been a lot of interest generated in the role of astrocytes in the brain in the metabolism. Though these are animal studies, but it's again exciting to know that animal studies have shown astrocytes as a part of the metabolic circuits within the brain. Astrocytes are sensitive to the insulin and insulin promotes glycogen storage and cell proliferation in astrocytes. Astrocytes are the main provider of the fatty acids in brain and role in lipid metabolism in brain. The ability of astrocytes to synthesize cholesterol is vital for the normal brain development, body composition and metabolism. Free acid, fatty acid uptake mediated by the LPL, astrocyte is essential for the control of cellular lipid storage. Astrocytes are capable of lipid synthesis, storage and oxidation. And there have been many data in the literature to show that ectopic fat accumulation in the human astrocytes impairs insulin action. You know, they cultured the human astrocyte in the presence of a high lipid content, lipid emulsion, consisting of the fatty acids and TG to induce the ectopic lipid storage. And after several days, the cells were stimulated with the insulin and the gene expression of profiling was performed. Ectopic lipid storage was detected in human astrocytes after lipid exposure and lipid storage was persistent even when the fat emulsion was removed from the cell culture medium. The ectopic fat storage in astrocytes impairs insulin dependent activation of AKT, glycogen synthesis and cell proliferation. Overcoming astrocyte insulin resistance by reducing ectopic lipid load might represent one of the promising upcoming treatment targets 
or the insulin resistance of the brain in obesity, diabetes, and the neurodegeneration. So time is not very far than we have many medicine for the neurodegenerative disorder. Now to close my talk, the summary, the epicardial fat has multiple functions to support a healthy heart, obesity, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes leads to the ectopic fat accumulation in the heart, which is in the epicardial myocardium, in the coronary artery, and because of the underlying lipotoxicity, inflammation, abnormal secretion, adipose cytokines, nitric oxide synthesis inhibition, it leads to the cardiac hypertrophy, cardiac dysfunction, coronary artery disease. Ectopic fat can be present in the brain and is associated with the brain insulin resistance. Drugs, which I have already discussed, targeting lipids and glucose homeostasis, can reduce the epicardial fat. Thank you.